it's a country resonator I don't really know exactly what you call this although what we do know it's a rally and this is Dave's latest acquisition and it's pretty much I think in the exact condition that it or the configuration it would have been from new I don't think anyone's missed with it in any way but it has a hugely high action um, and I don't think it's because it's been set up for slide playing for example I just think it's probably come like that plastic nut as usual which I want to replace so we're going to go with a adjustable nut here so we can go up and down for a bit of slide action but also um, I'm going to take this apart and just see what's inside of it I know what's inside of it we're going to have a look inside anyway inside the thing and um, we're going to have a look at the bridge and see what we can do to adjust the action on here so uh, it's a heavy guitar, that's one thing. It's a solid construction, so it's much heavier than I would suggest than a standard acoustic. Everything else is fairly, mm, you know, bog standardy. Um, the plastic on the tuners, which I never like to see. We'll get those off, clean it up. Um, but very solid. So not the most resonant thing in the world, but or not the sweetest, twinkliest thing in the world, but it's got to hold this whole structure together. Um, and we've got, of course, the tailpiece holding the strings, so they're not um, pulling anything on the top. They're pressing down, as you can hear, um, a little bit of dimple, dimple on the f finish there. It's just a kind of ripple on the top, actually. But I think everything, I expect everything, everything to be in good shape. Uh, feels quite good. It's just unplayable. Now the question would be, some people would have it really high for playing only slide, like put it on your knee or on a strap. Um, I think uh, we're going to set it up for the sort of Mark Knopfler, Romeo, Romeo and Juliet style. So it's got to be playable as a guitar for Dave rather than a slide thing. I mean, you know, you can play slide on it too. Um, so the first thing I want to do is if I put this over here, Got two cameras running now, so but I'm not sure how fabulous the filming is going to be anyway at the best of times. So what I want to do with this uh, is I want to measure the action and just sort of make a note of what it's doing, where it's at, so I can just see where I can go from and to. Um, and we've got some. Well, I did a bit of research onto these because I've never had one of these through, never really played one, and. Um, the research said, oh yes, you want to put uh, 16 to 60 or something strings on here. It just feels way too heavy. So I'm going to go back a bit and we'll, we can get heavier over time if, if Dave likes. But right now, let's make it playable in terms of a guitar first and foremost with a nice tone. So we've got three point, uh, what have we got, four. I would just about, I'd say we're on four actually, four mils and 3.25 4 mils, 3.25, 4 mils, bass, 4 mils, and treble, 3.25, so that's pretty tall. Um, we'll take care of this down here, which is also very tall. Um, what I'll also do is have a look at what it's doing in terms of neck relief. Yeah, it's got quite a lot in there. Again, who knows what you actually need. <coughs> um, but I think if you're running with huge... Great, chunky strings uh, you're going to be fighting against it but I think I'll take some out and I'm going to treat this and you know I'm sure people can shout at me from afar but but I'm going to treat this as a guitar first of all <coughs> excuse me um, and get it to play nicely and then we can look at what happens when you uh, play oh my lord that is too painful um, I think we'll probably just start taking this off um, yeah we can then worry about what we can do with it as a, a slide guitar um, should Dave want to play it that way but let's begin with a, a playable guitar with the target of playing the ye olde Romeo and Juliet's um, and that's what I would personally have it for is having that lovely slightly metallic tone um, but with you know, playing as a guitar, really. So anyway, we'll take this off because I want to adjust the do for a little bit later. Now, we, we're not going to put such um, heavy strings on later, so I think this is going to change in terms of its loading of the neck. So we won't make any adjustments just now, but what I will do, 
Oh, you come on. I will just knock off, knock off the nut um, so we can get this thing sort of on the move. Now, rallies are always very cooperative, aren't they? Sure they are. Now you just want to come free without anything falling apart. Well, it takes a bit of wood with it. What could you expect? Um, okay, so the idea would be now is we would take our adjustable nut and put it in a little base which has got a bit of brass in it and that will work. A lot of plastic in this thing for not a lot of tusk goodies when you finally get them out. But same AV. Um, I'm out of these so I've just got a couple on order. Uh, just kind of got a quick order of various things the other day. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten those feet first of all using uh, a small block like so I expect. Um, just so I can yeah, just, I flatten them so that they lose any cutting edge and I can use them, or I can spread the load of the uh, strings more evenly across the, the foot itself. So we'll just see what we've got. That's not bad. We'll just get down to a nice flat. Now I think I'll probably need to get the other sanding board out anyway because part of this requires a bit of sanding of the whole uh, the whole unit, nut unit. Um, so we we'll need to do that. That's okay. So this would be my start point. Get my nut in there. That's, that. That's actually pretty close to being on the mark already. Um, and first of all, we just check it out as a slot it in there. And actually, it goes in pretty much straight on. So I don't really need to do much to this other than I will probably do a little bit of flat sanding here just to make sure that the base and the tusk nut itself are flush with each other. Gets a little bit grey for a minute. And then that's good. And that's just I think this has already been probably been slightly um, tweaked once before. So there's our start point. Um, now, what am I going to do? Well, hmm, I know what the action is. Let's just take this off to one side for a minute, because I think the next thing to do will be to take these strings off. I think we're going to need to hold on to them. Somebody's tied a sort of a bit of a knot in them, which we could do without. But um, let's get them off, and I think. I think we need to explore a bit, um, and we obviously could do with them unhooked from here in order to do that, but at least we know we've got the nut ready for when we want to put strings back on. So I'm going to take all the metal work off down there, <coughs> we'll have a, a poke around and make sure, there's a couple of things I know to look out for on these, which is to make sure that the, the parts are <coughs> nicely fixed down and to each other so that they don't have any excess rattling that they don't want. That's, strings come off easily because they're just hooked hooked onto this little um, trapeze thing that's part of the... I don't know what this top piece is called, a cover, a chrome top piece. There's a bit underneath called spider, which you'll see in a minute, and then there's another bit that kind of makes the noise via the spider called the cone. Um, and in a sense, that's the noise generating most important bit for the quality of sound. But taking this all apart, we can have a bit of a clean up too, because it's a bit filthy. And these strings may not last long enough to be reused. We'll just have to see. Okay, so let's um, put these off to one side. And I should bring you across so you can see... Um, See what you can see. Probably a better, better to have a, <coughs> a wide view than a close-up one. So you can, there you go. You can sort of see everything there. Right. So we have some P 
piece is. So this one is loosely attached to the back, so I think we need to get that undone first. I'm going to take this off with the strap button. It's a, a nice tight fit. It is one, blimey. That's a bit worn by the looks of it, actually. Um, I think we want to take this off to get a good clean underneath it, so that's we may need to find a better, um, a better uh, screw when it comes to replace this. But we shall see. Oh, this is is pretty worn. need a new screw that's for sure because this one is oh. I mean, the main thing is if we can just get it out that will be the best part there we are there's our little, little very simple trapezy thing a little bit of um, felt or something on it and there's some grime there right now we can get our other screwdriver, move this out of the way, come along, and we can remove these little screws here to take off the cover part. Now right through the middle here there is a, a thing for uh, tightening down the um, tightening down the spider onto the cone. So you'll see that in a minute, but what I'm just going to do is take off all of these little tiny screws holding the chrome cover on. This will take a little minute or two. And you can see lots of screws to strip out and mess up. These are pretty much like little tuna screws anyway. I haven't really figured out what these little type of co little tweeter things here are supposed to do, or how they transmit any sound, because they appear to be just holes with grills over them. Maybe they're just to stop plectrums going inside. They don't really do anything, but I know they're supposed to let out the sound in a sort of tone grill sort of way. Now, this thing here is sort of, what's the word, um, symmetrical. So just some, since I'm new to this whole malarkey, what I will do is I'll start out by putting a little bit of tape on the bit that's nearest to me. Um, so I, when I come to put it back on, I'll put it back on the same way as it came off. Because I don't, now there may be some other way of ensuring that, but I don't know, so there's no point taking any silly schoolboy errors. Now, obviously you wouldn't have to take the tail piece, the trapeze piece off very often. I mean, you'd get it set up and then you'd, um, you'd, you'd be able to change strings without taking that off. I just wanted to take it off to give it a good clean. But, um, ew. So there's our chrome hubcap, and then here's our, ooh, our furry cone. Now it's a bit like a speaker cone, and it's absolutely filthy. So I think what I need to do is get the vacuum cleaner over here for a second. Sorry about the noise that you'll get, but I just I need to get rid of some of this. Now, watch out, we don't want to lose the saddle part straight away now do we so here's here's the saddle made out of a piece of wood and I'm going to want to adjust these down so I need to make sure these don't just go flying away which they won't do which is good now what do we notice about this okay that's as loose as it goes so that sits in there completely loose hmm. Okay. 
actually not that much loose. It probably needs more of a, a clean bit of cloth and stuff. But so you can see the structure inside of here is is quite quite big and substantial. I mean, it's a it's ply that's been turned you know bent round in a circle uh, with some zigzaggy joins here by the looks of it. And I guess we've got probably got loads of little bits ready to fly out. Um, but it's no more or less than that, and it's got what looks like fish glue holding this, this, um, is this the same level? Yeah, this is the back. So holding this to the back, it's got silicon looking glue, or it looks like fish glue, it probably isn't. But, so there we have our structure. Um, and inside that we've got this thing called the, uh, the spider, which is the, obviously the bit that looks like the spider's web. And then we've got this cone, which is a delicate thing, which sort of emulates the look of a speaker cone. And, and the two obviously end up sitting in there like this. Now, question is, does it sit at a little curve angle here for the sake of intonation? And I've got a sneaky suspicion it doesn't, because these string lines through here look like they're going in a straight line. So I imagine that there's a there's a problem with intonation on something like this. I could be wrong, but there doesn't appear to be any sensible intonation means. Um, like I said, I could be wrong. So where, oh where, is the little brush? It's there. Oh. Let's see if I can just, um, right, let's take it, take the other bit apart. So in here we've got a, is it a screwdriver? Uh, yeah, we've got a screwdriver <coughs> thing in here, but it's a uh, it's a long, thin. I've just picked up and flung one of the little screws that was attached to here. Let us rescue it. Is this it? It is it. Thank heavens for that. So. We've got to obviously get in between these things here and there. They appear to be very firmly fixed. I don't know if they're glued in place. Um, but that's kind of interesting because it, it seems to imply that you're stuck with that uh, action, which won't be the best thing in the world. So let us try and find a screwdriver that's thin enough to go down into there and do the biz. It might be this one. It's a bit fine, but let's see if it does anything. Now it's, it's a bit of a challenge. How do we get that undone um, without damaging the screwdriver head? That's yeah, a bit better. Okay. That's good. see that that's coming apart from the, and that's on a spring so the whole thing will end up being sprung I can get it to come, come off sorry about the noise is this coming up no probably not Put it back in there. So I'm going to take this all apart because I want to get this cleaned up. Because I'm sure the furry cone is not going to be the best thing for tone. So there's that thingy. Uh, will it come out? No, it won't come out. So it's sort of designed to sit in there. There's our spring, which we can do. And here's our, our cone with, with a little fixed bit here brass bit to take the th or it's got a thread in it so that's what that's what we use to kind of tighten it all up with so there's quite a bit of nasty dust here which we can just brush away dust of ages and then we can use some I don't know naphtha and cloths 
So that's intriguing and I might have to do a bit of research um, when it comes to this spider and its um, and its uh, saddle because that appears to be well and truly stuck in there. So you've got the, the obviously the um, treble strings here and the bass strings here so we know which way it will go in like so but the strings appear to go as you can probably see here straight through in a line they don't they don't go at an angle so this isn't really meant to be tilted on a slant now if it's not tilting on a slant that means it's not really compensated it's a straight line so that's going to be sort of interesting from the point of view of keeping this thing in tune whilst playing it like a guitar um, which which is weird really but who knows new to this so <laughs> god there's so much dust in here now as I said the, the question about this is if we're going to make an adjustment on the height action like you either stuck with one height forever or you can make an adjustment. So let's just check something common sense wise. We've got our, our cone which sits in there. So that's a fixed height. You can't go up or down. With this you can only go into it in so far as you can um, tighten it down uh, but you can't get any lower. So once this is coupled perfectly with the um, there we go, coming through. Once we've coupled this to the cone, then it will all sit in its geometry. You can't do anything else. So the only thing we're really going to be able to do when it comes to adjusting the playing action from that horrendous four millimeters um, is that is going to be, if I can just get this to stay still while I turn it, the only thing we're going to be able to do is to remove those pieces and put them back in, the saddle pieces. Right, so, and that could be slightly destructive in so far as it may fall to bits when we try and take it apart. So let's just put that over here and have a, a look at it before we get the cleaner. So we've got this, we've got this thing, first of all we've got this little screw that can't come out because this, these wooden saddles are in the way. Um, I can see what looks a bit like some glue uh, gel or you know fish glue or something at the end of this one here so that could have been glued in place so I get that it wants to stay put and I can see that it's it's made the um, I don't know how well you can see this it's made the uh, the sides of the bridge go in just overhang the circle which stops this screw coming out which is neither good or bad the challenge with this is that to make this work you have to um oh hang on a minute has that got a bit of an angle on it no i'm, I'm imagining it i think um yeah it you, your strings your d and your g your g sits there and your d sits there and they've only got a little bit of supporting wood underneath so so i think these have been glued in place. So the only way of adjusting the height on this is to remove these and uh, yeah, lower them at the same sort of rate. Obviously they're precisely spaced the same as each other right now. Um, it, it clearly doesn't really want to be moved judging by the way it seems to be glued in place. Now you would want them to be stuck in place you would want because well you want them held in place because you don't want them wandering off while you're playing um I'm just having a little feel down the edges of this um and it's interesting that it's got you know it's actually this wood it's made of wood um this does feel like does feel like this was glued in place a long long time ago well mm -mm -mm. nobody wants to play a four millimeter action guitar even if it is slightly better arguably for playing 
that thing that's called a slide. So in truth, if I were to work out what I wanted to do, let's, let's give it a, a sort of target. So we would want to go from, let's call it 1.5, and let's call that 2.5. And this one would be uh, 1.75, so we'd want to minus 1.75 off here, at the, as I would measure it at the last fret, which on this guitar is, yep, 1.3-ish. No, so 1.75, and then 2.5 is 1.5. That's a bit high. Let's go 2.5 to 2. See, that's a bit uncomfortable. Let's call this 1.25 and then let's call this 1.5. Okay, so we go 1.25, 1.5 is 4, and so times 1.3 times 1.3 equals, if I get my calculator, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Calculator, please. Calculator. Clear. Uh, <coughs> 1.25. times 3. No. Clear. 1.25 times 1.3 times 1.3. 1 1.62. 1 1 1.62. And on this one, it's 1.5 times 1.3. 1.5 times 1.3. 1.95. So those would be my amounts to remove to get this down to a decent action. So, the question I would have is if I had to cut these off here, I would be losing how much? And was that anywhere close to what I'm going to take off? Well, I'm going to take two millimeters off the base side, which is oh, 1.95, let's be, be straight, 1.95 off the base side. So, there's the base side, that side. So, I could break it off there, but it would be then a fraction too low. But I may have no choice. I'm trying to think of the worst situation if I have to snap this and get it out, to get it out, and we can dig out the rest and then put it back in. Uh, the alternative is we could use a, um, a, sp a split uh, saddle, which I haven't brought up with me, a tusk saddle. There's no reason why not to do that. They've obviously chosen wood because they think wood transfers in a particular way. Um, I've seen guitars with, I've seen these resonators with um, uh, saddles, tusk type, plastic type saddles. So this has been stuck in place, so that's interesting. I think what I'm going to do for tonight is I think I'm going to um, clean these up while we're here, and then I'll probably go and do a bit of research into uh, where we stand as far as what's a, no, a good alternative. If we, if we were to... I feel like a captain on a ship. If we were to pull apart that um, bridge structure there and rebuild it with something else what you know what have people done what do they do uh, i thought it would i thought it would come out easily when we got to it so um that's learned that's not the case it's all right so i'm just gonna give this a little kind of rub over to get as much of the sort of baked on grime away From the, the spider, as it's called. It's not actually that dirty once the dust is off it, but it's, um, I just want to get the sort of fluff mainly. <laughs> Spiders coming down from the roof, getting in my hair. Hair is a, a loosely applied term. All right, no need to be unkind about it. You furry types, you. Right. Let's guess this a clean. Now this reminds me of a cooking implement of some sort. I'm not sure which it is. Just any old one. A wok, probably. A cheap wok. So when cleaning something like this, just be careful because it's delicate, as any speaker cone would be. And we don't want to damage the 
a nice smooth shape of the thing. Um, oh, it's like some of this is really baked on, as phrase would go. Although it's only on the face up side that it's um, that dirty. That. Maybe it's uh, it's got that sort of kitchen grease that you find. Um, and we could probably polish it out with some uh, chrome autosol or something like that. Um, but again, it's it's not. I don't think it's that critical as long as we've got the bulk of the dust out the way. Um, I mean, it might uh, it might even clean up a bit easier with some. Uh, What's that stuff? You know what I mean. Cellulose thinners. That missed completely. Since it's aluminium or aluminum. Okay, let's see if it will lift any of this stuff. Yeah, it's, it's, mm, I don't know if it's, um, I think it may be aluminium corrosion actually. Not as opposed to dirt. I don't think it's. I don't think it's particularly going to come off. I think it's. It's either scarring of some kind. Um, interesting. And there's a grubby bit there. No, it doesn't seem to want to do anything to that surface there. It's got this slight corrosion sort of feel to it. I think it's uh, it's going to stay there. I think the only way around that would be to um, possibly polish it out. Yeah, but it's okay. It's in fairly good all-round shape. And then we've got here. This one is just a bit grimy from everyday use and stains and drinks and whatever. So we can just afford to sort of rub down. Right, so what do you think? Do you think pull all that wood out and replace it with something else? But of course it's got to be calculated to the correct height. It's not going to be adjustable, so we have to you know, make something to order. I mean we've got the original and we can measure from that the size of the piece that has to go in or the pieces so we can actually calculate it down fairly well. Um, but yeah, it's interesting to see how, um, how anyone else does it. I mean I think I expect a lot of people will leave the action um, as is, but what I don't know about this guitar, here's a bit more sort of grime corrosion, what I don't know about this guitar is how much uh, kind of change in the structure there is all round, um, you know, whether the neck is sinking at all into the body or anything like that. Now I've just managed to just shred a load of um, paper, which makes a bit of a stupid mess. Hold on. I can afford to put this on the floor because I will vacuum it away at a later point. So the way you avoid getting that everywhere is to use a piece of cloth instead, which doesn't shred. Yeah, so, yeah I've got its own, don't we'll worry too much about it, it's got its own a little bits of corrosion too, but overall it's in fairly good shape. We'll just clean off this thing. Yes, I've got my measurements. I know how much I want to reduce it by, and I know what the size of the pieces are in the bridge. So I guess what I'll do is uh, calculate what's needed, uh, what the new pieces will be. We'll put into that little unit. 
however they're fitted. I mean, a little bit of super glue uh, and the piece cut to size. We could probably do it with some bone, or we could do it with uh, two halves of a, a nice wide saddle from an acoustic guitar, either which way. But I think that's probably going to be the place where I stop taking things apart there, except what I will do is while I'm at it, let's just give the guitar itself a, a clean, well, it's all the goose and the stuff is on the bench and I'll use a cleaner cloth. I need to get some more of these. So I could also probably use to take the um, tuners off as well as never a bad thing for a good cleanup. I'm just going round hmm. some old built up grime. Looks like super glue there. Anyway, so it looks like um, Dave, whose guitar this is, and this has got a lot of what looks like nicotine on it. Um, Dave, uh, we were playing together in a sort of new band setup that we had, um, and we played at Dave's wedding back in October, and we've been sort of waiting for an opportunity to get back and do some more things, and it looks like we've been... Um, given the summer cruise, party cruise gig um, for our keyboard player's school where she teaches. So that's going to be great. <laughs> so we accepted by the sounds of it. So now we've got till July to learn a set. And, you know, there's quite a few of us, so it's actually quite difficult to get a whole crowd of people together to rehearse in any sort of regular, um, you know, regular meetings. So we're going to have to be uh, doing a lot of learning at home and then very sort of focused get-togethers when we can. But that's going to be, it's going to be a real exciting challenge. And it's a paid thing, so we've got to be at least, it'll be on, you know, it'll be a friendly audience, I expect, but we've still got to be good enough to create a good atmosphere. <sighs> for the party goers. Um, so that's, uh, you'll probably hear me talk a bit more about that as time goes by, as I get panicked and say I don't know, I haven't learned the guitar break for that or this. And I hope that the songs we choose don't have too many kind of ultra difficult guitar breaks because well, it might be a, a bridge too far, but anyway, I'm just probably need to clean this a bit more at a later date, but I'm just giving it its first going over to hygienically freshen it up a little bit. Um, again, the amount of yellow stuff that's coming off onto this cloth is slightly concerning. It's, uh, it's definitely showing how I think probably nicotine stained this thing was, is. Um, it, I can't smell it exactly, but it doesn't necessarily mean much since my sense of smell is a bit naff. Right, so look, here's the cleaned up, temporarily cleaned up guitar. I think what I'll do is I'll put this back together oh it was my that was my screwdriver so basically when it comes to time this little spidery legs all the legs have to Touch down. Oh, I forgot to put the spring in. <laughs> they have to touch down nicely on this um, cone, and then the whole lot has to be held down by the cover. Should finally get round to it.
Thank you. <laughs> yeah, here's the spring. It doesn't look like there's any particular way around that the um, the thing has to go, other than uh, we're, going to, we're going to put it somewhere like that. And that becomes one unit. Um, yeah, 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 there's the base side. So when I look at these strings they definitely aren't slanted so so it's it's going to obviously all go together in a straight line it would be nice if we did replace that with um a somewhat compensated i guess what we'll do is we're going to have a, a good close look to see what's what's possible or and or likely Okay, so that's in place, that sits where it sits, and what's going to keep this in place? Anything here touching that? I guess those press down on there a little bit, that's all that I can think of. There's the... One, two. This is money really doing this so that I don't lose any of the bits. Um, it's probably just as well to put this back together and lose the screws. Lose the screws. Uh, anyway, yeah. Well, I'll do. I think. I think. That, so I've, there's a couple of issues. Then one is that the height is not easily adjustable without breaking out these wooden pieces. The next part will be um, the fact there's no compensated intonation, which means uh, as you go up the neck it's going to be out of tune, or actually in different places it's going to be slightly out of tune, which is not brilliant. Um, so that could be fixed. Oh, mm -hmm. Could it be fixed? Yes, we could. We could... Um, yeah, we could angle the bridge and have small slots in it and have the compensation. So, not the bridge, the saddle, sorry. So I think we could solve that. But that would, again, that would require a new tusk saddle. Um, but as you can see, it's got to be quite tall. So it may have to be some sort of combination of things to make it work. Um, be interesting to see if anyone ever does normally make that adjustment or you know if they do how do they. Okay so there's my main bits I'll keep these bits off to one side. Let me hang this up for now and we'll come back to it later and let me find a container for the important little bits so they don't get lost. So, cover that little thing, whatever it's called, you know what it is. Some filthy strings that we may need to use once more before they get sent to the, the laboratory, laboratory, that place where I can do some scientific research. All right, that's going to be it for tonight with this beastie, um, because I just simply don't think we're going to get going to know what to do unless I do a bit further research. I'll have a look now while I'm off camera and see what I can find. But look at that. Grotty. See you in a bit. <laughs>